Have you ever had this situation before? You've gone to a speciality cafe and had the most amazing light roast espresso. You buy their beans and take them home, but for some reason you can't replicate this on your home espresso machine. By the time you get it dialed in, you've run out of beans and you have to start the whole process over again. What's going on? Why is it so difficult to dial in light roast coffees for espresso? That's what I'm here to answer on the first episode of my new series, Better Espresso. The first step is one you might not have thought of, but I do this for every coffee I buy from a cafe. Before I even get the beans home, I ask the barista what they do to dial in this espresso. I might ask them what dose they use, how much finer they grind, or what temperature they extract at if you have that option on your machine. Rather than asking for a specific grind setting when you're likely to have a different grinder at home, you can ask them whether they dial coarser or finer than average, and that way you can extrapolate for your own machine. This way you're using the cafe's expertise in dialing in their own coffee to help you not waste shots at home. Next beginner step is to really get to know the range of your your grinder so you can estimate a good starting point. If you know that the maximum you've ever needed is a 22 and the minimum is 11 as it is on my DF64, then you know where to start. Here's a really big one that's an underrated but incredibly useful bit of information, the elevation that the coffee is grown at. You'll see this number on a lot of packages of speciality coffee. I used to think that this was just some kind of flex from speciality coffee shops, but this is incredibly useful information, especially for dialing in light roasts. This is because the higher the elevation or altitude that the coffee is grown at, the the denser the bean is likely to be, and so the finer you'll need to grind or higher temperature you'll need to extract that goodness properly. Basically anything grown below a thousand meters above sea level is going to be a softer bean and therefore a milder and sweeter flavored coffee. Between 1000 and around 1350 meters this is going to be a slightly harder bean and it's going to have more distinctive flavors. Above 1400 meters is going to be very high elevation and it's going to be a very dense bean. Some specialty coffees are grown at between 1500 and 2000 meters above sea level and combine that with a lighter roast and you're gonna have a very dense bean because the roasting process pulls a lot of moisture out of the coffee bean. This might sound like a bit too much science just to get a good cup of joe but it's a lot of relevant and useful information to get a better shot from the very first pull. So factor in elevation when you decide how fine to grind your coffee. Next take a note of your shots as you're dialing them in. I use a book like this one and I have a layout like this on my website that you can download for free without signing up for anything. You can copy my layout, print it or use your own but you should be taking notes so that when you do get a good shot, you know what you did and you can do it again. In short, you basically want to track your dose and your grind setting as well as your yield and time and your tasting notes on whether it was sour or bitter, as well as any other factors that you can control with your home setup. This might sound like a lot of work, but it makes a huge difference, especially if you're using a low retention grinder and you're switching between coffee beans a lot. You can just check out what you dialed in previously and whether it came out sour or bitter and you can adjust as necessary. As another important side note, don't be married to the standard shot timings. Sure, for most espressos, getting a one to two ratio of ground coffee to espresso in around 20 to 30 seconds is ideal. But I found that especially for light roast beans, I like the flavor of an espresso that's extracted for a little bit longer, maybe a 40 second pull instead of 30. Or maybe I do it as a ristretto in a similar time scale. So I do a one to one ratio or a one to 1.5. That's one of the benefits of having a home espresso machine. You can experiment with what you like and teach your palate to taste the difference between sour and bitter and all the different flavors an espresso can offer. It's your coffee, make it the way you like, not the way some dude on YouTube tells you to do it. Oh wait, yeah. Another big factor in espresso is temperature, and if you're able to control this on your machine, a good range is between 90 and 96 degrees C, or 196 and 204 Fahrenheit. I don't usually go hotter than around 96 degrees C because you risk scalding the beans and extracting a lot of bitterness, so I'm usually at an average around 93 degrees, I might go a little bit hotter for lighter roast espresso. This is where that elevation and density stuff comes in. If the coffee is grown at a really high elevation, and it's also light roasted, I'm probably going to bump my temperature up 1, 2, or maybe even 3 degrees degrees to extract more of that flavor. This is where you might find you're still getting a very sour espresso despite hitting reasonable timings on your extraction. If I don't have very much of a particular coffee bean to play with, then I will start at a higher temperature like 95 or even 96 degrees. Finally, it's important to adjust the grind based on the age of the coffee. In other videos, I have suggested to look for a roast on date as opposed to a best before or a sell by date. For espresso, it's usually best to use beans that are between 7 and 40 days off their roast date. But the grind setting you'll need will change throughout this time and you'll need to dial ever 
so slightly finer every few days to keep your ideal flavor profile. This is just as true with light roasts and dark roasts, although dark roasts tend to go stale more quickly. Long story short, just take the age of the coffee bean into consideration and use your note to make micro adjustments as the coffee ages. These are some general rules I follow for dialing in light roast espresso, but there are a lot of variables involved and your gear is gonna have a massive impact on your ability to pull a good shot. If you wanna know more about how to dial in espresso in general, I made a whole video about all the variables that you need to dial in any roast level over here. Also, I wanna hear from you as well. What kind of problems are you having with espresso that I can help you solve? If you found this video useful, please give it a like as this tells YouTube to show it to more people and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching this video, you wonderfully over-caffeinated people, and I will see you on the next one.